It's called Boyle's Law. Okay. Now, there's another law that also we're going to talk about. It's called Charlie's Law. Or Chuck's Law. What are we call it? <laughs> Chucky. So, what is Chucky's Law? It sounds like, like Chucky. Isn't he like some... He's this little doll in horror films from horror the late guy, 80s, right? early Yeah, 90s, I'm not yeah. into that thing. But okay. Yeah, so volume versus temperature. So, that's... Uh, so, we're not, we're not talking about pressure anymore. Just volume and temperature. You spelled versus wrong, by the way. Did I? Yep. Well, that's good thing you're a science teacher. Yeah, I am. <laughs> so really, so as temperature goes up, what's going to happen to the volume? Uh, temperature goes up. Um, I don't know. Why don't we figure this out? Actually, I'll tell you. The volume goes up. Oh, you're I, just going to tell I me? will show you a okay. cool example. Um, this summer, actually, so if you have low temperature, here's the balloon, and if you increase the temperature, it'll get larger. Okay. A cool application to that is hot air balloons. Well, this summer, you know, Mr. Sam's, I was at a triathlon. You know, I like to do those things. Yes. And at the triathlon, Crazy. at the festival, they actually had hot air balloons. Oh, that's fun. And so I uh, kind of showed a video of hot air. That's why we have the hot air balloons in our background oh, picture yes. here. And so, yeah. So let's watch the video of me. Um, at the triathlon. Here we have an amazing example of uh, gas laws, Charles's law. What I've got is in front of me is a bunch of hot air balloons. In fact, one's way already up in the sky right here. And if you'll notice, occasionally what they're doing is they're throwing some fire. You can see the fire right there that they're throwing in. Uh, they're basically they're heating up some air. And as they heat up the air, what they're doing is they're causing the gas to expand, the air to expand. It is less dense when it is um, hot than when it is cold. Charles Law says is the higher the temperature the higher the volume. It's a direct relationship and by doing that, that of course allows these hot air balloons to uh, rise up in the sky as we can see with the one right here. who's way, way up there already. He's the first one to take off and now the rest of these are about to take off in just a moment. Occasionally you will see the uh, fire turn on in here and that fire is an indication of course they're trying to keep the balloon um, going higher and higher by expanding that gas using Charles's law. So these guys who love to fly their hot air balloons are uh, utilizing Charles's law over and over and over again. Okay. 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 So you can see that as the temperature goes up, uh -huh. the volume expands, which actually reduces the density and causes the balloon to float right. in the sky. Pretty cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool, isn't it? I bet you're going to show me a graph now. Yeah. Hey, look at graph. It's kind of weird <laughs> orange, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, well. Hey, as the volume goes up, the temperature goes up. By the way, an important thing, guys, is the temperature must be in Kelvin. Always. For any gas law, temperature has to be in Kelvin. Do not try to do these in Celsius. It does not How about Fahrenheit? Work. No, fair, we never use Fahrenheit. I, know, I just thought I'd No. <laughs> No, no. Always yeah. has to be in Kelvin. Guys, Kelvin it is. Now, how do you get from Celsius to Kelvin? Add 273. Remember, Celsius plus 273 yeah. is the Kelvin temperature. Yeah, the problem with Celsius is it can go in the negative land, and these equations don't work if yeah. you have to go down no, the negative land. Negative. Yeah. So, what's the meaning of the graph? Uh, volume is directly proportional to the Kelvin temperature. Right? So, if the Kelvin temperature is doubled, the volume is doubled. Yeah. If, if it tripled, the, it would be triple. Tri hey, look at that. Yeah, and the equation know that was there. is V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Okay. You know, we should probably like do an example. An example. So let's do an example problem. Hey, look, here's, it's the balloon. Here's, here's the issue we're going to have. We've got a balloon. This, you, you remember that show? Um, what's the name of it? it was Wilson was the, was the like Oh, the, the little movie. volleyball at Tom yeah, Hanks. Yeah, Tom Hanks in uh, that movie. Castaway. Castaway, Castaway oh, yeah. Okay. We've got an audience, guys. So, yeah, yeah Castaway, yeah. They can now, we can get it from the peanut gallery. Castaway, and he had Wilson. Well, yeah. we took Wilson hey, and we put him in an oven. My students, remind me to tell you a story about that movie in class. Okay, there you go. All right, so put Wilson in the oven. He's going to get bigger. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Well, let's do the problem here. Okay? okay. So let's do that. Everybody, what do you need to get out? Your calculator. There you go. All right, a balloon has a volume of 5.43 liters. Actually, you know what I like to do, Mr. Sams? What's that? It's not advance the slide when I want to, is uh, I want to draw pictures. I think oh, pictures, pictures are, are good. good. Yeah. So I have a balloon. Okay, here's okay. a balloon. And what do I know about this balloon? It has a volume of 5.43 5 liters. 5.43 liters. 4.43. Yeah. 4 I can't talk. I've had way too much coffee. And 25 <laughs> degrees Celsius. I don't like Celsius. We're going to say, what's the volume going to be when it jumps to 95, 95 Celsius. degrees Celsius? But we don't do Celsius. I know. So but let's write down what we know. So okay. we know, we know our volume, our V1, 
is 5.43 liters. Okay. Okay, we're good. T1. Our T1 is 25 degrees Celsius, but that's yeah. wrong. Yeah, we don't like that. So I have to add, add 273. 273. Now I'm not even using my calculator for that because it's no. too easy. That's 298 Kelvin. I'm just adding that to my help. You're my amazing. My help. My head, you, head you. Amazing. And my T2 is 95 degrees Celsius. Is that good? No, we need Kelvin. You add 273. Now I can't do that in my actually. 368. 368 Kelvin. You guys could add that up. Now, actually, let me also say here, this is the volume in liters. The thing that's interesting about uh, the volume is you can put it in any unit you like. That's convenient. As long as you have the same units. Now we have all our numbers. We're just going to plug it into our equation. Remember, the equation was V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. V1 is 5.43 liters. T1 is 273. I've got to put that in Kelvin. Is equal to... V2, that's my X, mm -hmm. if you will, divided by 368 Kelvin. Now, how do you solve that problem? So um, I would just cross multiply. Yeah, and remember, folks, you can cross multiply, a cross multiply, and when you cross multiply, you get the answer. So I can take 5.43, so I'm over my calculator, 5.4, I messed up there. Delete. All right, clear. I'll do this again. 5.43 times 368. And actually what I could do, guys, is I can actually divide right by 273. So I'll just do that. If you don't divide believe by, us, ask your math teacher. Yeah, well, I might explain it in the call-outs, too. Yeah. And I get a V of 7.3 uh, uh, liters. liters. Now, the temperature went up, so our volume should go up. And if we compare 5.43 to 7.3, obviously the volume went up. So it makes sense, so you probably did your math right. Yeah, that wasn't too hard. Okay. All right. So we should probably, uh, we have one more to talk about, so let's move on to that. Okay. And that's called the gay lucic Law. Okay. Right? Two guys, gay and Lusik, who figured this out. Yep. Pressure versus temperature. All right. Okay. When the pressure goes up, so now we're to keep the volume the same. Think bicycle tire. Bicycle tire is about the same size. Okay. If you increase the pressure, you what happens to the temperature? It goes up. Yeah. That's exactly okay. right. Temperature goes up. Um, another thing, if, if any of you have ever played paintball or have anything yeah. with a CO2 cartridge, um, as that CO2 cartridge, as you use it, the pressure in the cartridge goes down, and, and, it gets cold. and you'll notice that the cartridge gets cold, and the temperature goes down. Yeah. So it's two things going on. So pressure, we would say, is directly proportional to the Kelvin temperature. So it has a graph, and it's the same, the same like the last one, but it's pressure. If you double the pressure, you double the temperature. Double the temperature. The Not Kelvin. Only the Kelvin temperature. temperature. And so here's our equation, P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Well, I think we should probably do an example. Actually, here, we'll use a bicycle. Hey, look, tire. a bike. Get a bike. And so what happens as you travel, start on a cold day, and then the tire warms up? Uh, the tire warms up, the pressure should go up. In so the let's tire. see. What, that's, that's the question. So here we have a cold day, and it got hot. You see, it was a hot pavement. That's the picture. Okay. So a bicycle initially has a pressure of 120 pounds per square inch, etc. So notice, okay, let's do the problem. Okay. okay. Now... Now, the pressure is uh, 120 PSI. Now, last problem, you said the volume could be in any unit. Yeah. Does the pressure, can it be in any unit as well? Yeah. So this is in pressure of, of pounds per square inch, which is so how I don't have to convert that to anything, right? No, you could. You could convert it to, to atmospheres or right. whatever, but you don't need you to. don't need to. But the, te the temperatures I have to put in Kelvin. <laughs> That's good. All so right. So let's write down what we P1 know. P1 is uh, 120, 120 PSI. PSI. That's a pressure unit. Okay. And uh, temperature initially was 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. And so my T2 is 35. Got hot. That's a hot day. Okay. 35. So I'm just trying to find P2, right? All right. So let's get those temperatures in Kelvin. So, okay. So if I add 273, actually, we just seen that's 298. 298, right? yeah. Well, and that's easy because this is only 10 degrees above that. Oh. So this oh. would be uh, 308, oh, right? Yep. So I'm going to plug those into my numbers or into my uh, equation. equation. P1 over T1. So it's P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. So I'm going to say 120 PSI. Divided by 298 Kelvin is equal to P2 over 308 Kelvin. I'm going to say cross multiply again. So you can say 120 times 308, I'll watch this through, is equal to 298 times P2. Divide both sides by 298, 298 cancels, and 298, and that will give me my answer. So here's my calculator, 120 times... 308 divided by 298 gives my answer. 124 PSI. Now the temperature went up, so the pressure should go up, and we can see it went from 120 to 124. That's, so that not, makes, that's not a big change, no. is it? But the well, temperature well, yeah. only went up from 298 
to 308. Right. It's not like we doubled the temperature or anything like right. that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know what? I'm, I'm getting kind of hungry. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I could go for a burrito. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm not with me around here. Carne asada. See, he, he released that gas earlier, and oh, my gosh. Mm. The pressure went down and filled the room. I love burritos. One thing about gas is they fill the space they're in. Yeah, we'll talk about this room soon. Yeah, okay. Graham's <laughs> Law of E-Fusion and D-Fusion. All right, we'll see you later, guys.